Every time we fall, is it just going to be a little, a little, a little dot on our finger or a little scrape on the elbow? Sometimes it may be the knees and the whole bit, right? But we have to keep, get up and keep going, and don't give up. That's what makes you righteous in God's eyes, is that you never give up on Him or His way, or yourself in essence. So the higher a person ascends spiritually, the farther they are prone to fall. This is exactly why B'nai Israel got such a stern rebuke from Moshe. In the Gemara, in Berachot 6b, this instructs that a person Leaving shul should not take large strides, but rather they should take their time getting home. Take their time. Hold that, that holiness that you just attained, right? That, that feeling between you and the Spirit. That understanding that you got from His Torah. Hold it. Take your time going home. Lest you get in a hurry and then all the other things start zooming in your thought processor. And you forget all about the holiness you just had. Right? That's sometimes a crime. We forget. We don't, we don't hold on to that light. And we just let it dissipate. Because we're distracted by everything. The pious people of old days used to sit in the shul for at least an hour after the service was over. In this way, the rabbis explained, they eased into the mundaneness of their everyday activities. So they just kind of, like, very much the way you guys do, right? As soon as service is concluded, that's it, y'all are all off in each other's lives, right? Oh, girl, what do you do? Sister, brother, brother, sister, and all that. No? That was like a condensed couple weeks right there. Uh, So when you ease in it, rather than rushing headlong from your spiritual high into the mundane life, you have an amazing spiritual advantage by the experience staying with you throughout an elongated time period, that you can carry it into the arguments, conversations, and other things that you'll get into further in the week. You hold that holiness within you, right? For the same reason Hashem tells us to serve Him with simcha, joy. Because you get far more done with Simcha in your heart than you do if you're, if you're hurt or malice. Then your heart is kind of begrudging, right? Sure, I'll do it, but, you know, but. but let me go on. Almost every moment when we rush, begins to rob us of joy. Little by little, little by little, it robs joy of us. You know, you think, say, a, a great example that I have, and it's probably the best example I have, and some guys won't understand it at all, and so I'm sorry if you don't understand it, but the best example I have is I, I for many years, my bride, she led the, the sisters in the dance, right? And so you see the beauty and the spirit flowing, it's elegant, it's amazing, oh my gosh, it's a blessing. But you see the other side of it too, right? The broken toe, and I've got to keep going with this, right? I've got to keep going. Flesh isn't feeling it, but i got to keep going. Right? So you see both sides of it. But for them, the beauty of dancers is that they, they carry the song or they carry that blessing of that connection with God. They carry that with them in the song throughout the week as they're humming the tune. As If you've never been to a dance practice, you have no idea how many times these sisters will sing and say the same song over and over again till they feel it's a good offering to, the, to God. And all the husbands know the song too. <laughs> we, we do, we do. We do. There's many songs I know word for word because of the dance. Really helped me with my Hebrew tremendously. But let me go on. So we need to learn to hold the joy in the mundane times of our life. That way, in each of those mundane 
interactions, we can effectively represent who we are, the king's children. Who are you? Oh, yeah. It's so quiet. How we count that? The king's children, right? Children of the most high. Sons and daughters. Yeah. The king's children is who you are. So you need to, to be there, you have to have that joy. It's necessary. It's necessary. I say for young couples, it's easy because you just think about precious moments with your baby or with each other. That's, that's an easy one. Oh, thank you, Hashem. My baby smiled at me today. Thank you, Hashem. I changed my baby and he didn't pee on me. Thank you, Hashem. He understands. Right? It's those little things. You, know, you have to carry those joys all throughout it. And this keeps the mundane things palatable, easier to navigate. The scripture tells us that the adversary is like a lion stalking his prey, hoping to catch you without the joy, without your wherewithal about you, to distract you from who you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing. Don't be distracted by the yetzer in your mind. You have a purpose. You are purposed. God has an intention for you throughout your life. But you have to begin to walk with Him to see that happen. So remember, that lion that's creeping in, in the darkness, hoping to pounce on you and, and get you, he's just trying to steal your joy, your focus, your direction. All he has to do is slightly distract you. Uh, people who sail tell me that if you're just off by one degree in your navigation, that'll make you go someplace entirely different than where you were initially intending. One degree is all it takes to get you way off, off course. Same thing with Hashem. One degree can get us way off course. Although unlike with sailing, with Hashem, you can easily get back on course and get back onto His path. Sailing, it might take you a little bit to navigate all the way back, right? Depending on wind and everything else. So we have to thank Hashem that we have a God who is faithful, that every time we do get off course, He nudges us back ever so gently. In Ephesians 4 and 14, Then no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, learn to speak the truth in love. We will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the Head, that is our Messiah. From Him the whole body is joined and held together by every supporting ligament. It grows, it builds itself up in love. As each part does its portion. So I tell you this, in fact I insist upon it, that you must no longer live as pagans do as Gentiles do in the futility of their understanding. They are darkened in their thinking and separate from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because they have had their joy, their purpose robbed by that lion. The distractions out there are sometimes too tempting. Right? They're really flashy, really bright. They say a lot of really nice catchphrases. Kind of. It's easy to get distracted from who you are and what you're supposed to be doing. If you're confused, look back in the Word. It's all right there. If you're confused, get with a brother or sister of faith who's a little more seasoned than you. They'll help you out. Rabbi Levi 
said, On every day there is a heavenly voice that emanates from Mount Horeb, announcing, Woe to all them, the people, because of the affront to the Torah. What is an affront to the Torah? Who knows what a, an affront is? Who knows? Huh? being fully honest in it, right? It's just, it's just, it's fake. It's wrong. It's, it's not correct. That's why part of the, the first question they ask you, again, nososo ben sata, are you being honest in all your dealings? Part of that honesty is, am I being honest with myself and with Hashem? Am I being honest with myself and with Hashem? Woe to them because of the affront to the Torah. For anyone who does not study is called rebuked. This is from the Word itself. Anyone who does not study the Word of God is called by God rebuked. Period. So as the verse says, it compares that a person who does not study the Torah but knows this is the Word of God. Solomon compares this to a pig with a golden ring. It serves no purpose. It serves no purpose. We can't eat the pig. It's trait. The gold on the ring, it, all of it just serves no purpose at all. Right? So too is that beautiful woman who has turned from sound reason, says Solomon. It also says that the tablets were the handiwork of Hashem, and the writing was Hashem's writing that engraved the tablets in Exodus 32 and 16. Do not read, however, Haros engraved, but rather read Haros. All right, y'all say Haros. Try again. Haros. Heros. Heros. Engraved. Engraved. Free. 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 Which are you? Heros. Mostly. <laughs> Heros. So, there is no more freedom that you can have than through God's Word alone. Period. It is the the, the agent that allows you to live the most free, the most liberal, the most consciously aware, this is where you're supposed to be. In His Word, living it throughout your life, that it may make you heros, once it's haros engraved upon your heart, right? Right, Rob Paul tells us in Romans, I would not have known sin except through God's instruction, for I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not told me specifically this upsets Hashem. For I, I'm sorry, I read that. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, This is coveting, do not covet. But sin, seizing, every, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced in me every kind of covetous desire apart from the law. Sin is dead. True freedom comes from God. And the gift that He has given is available to all people, no matter where you are or where you come from. In Galatians 5 and 1, Yeshua tells us that Yeshua has set us free for freedom, so that we may stand firm and not let ourselves become burdened by lawless 
behavior or lawless commitments. In Romans 8 and 2, the law of the, the law of the Spirit has set you free in his salvation from the law of sin and death. Therefore, live by the law of life. It is right here in the scriptures. Every day should be like Elo. And Elo is Elo. Who knows what Elo is? Right? I belong to God, and God belongs to me. This is our commitment to each other throughout this month. Oh, last month, I'm sorry. So as we go forward, you purpose to make that day about you and your Creator, that moment, include Him in it throughout the journey. Okay, and finally, As Rabbi Israel said in the statement about every day should be like Elo, this means that we must try with all of our heart to preserve those spiritual gains that we make during our prayer time, during our service time, during our worship moments. That spiritual high that you have, you need to hold on to it and preserve it throughout the week. That way each week, with each moment that you meet God, you can add to that spiritual growth without letting the mundane things of this world distract you and take away from your joy. This way, when Elul returns next year, we will already be where we left off and actually growing even further ahead Amen? Amen. By receiving even more enlightenment and going to new places that we've dreamed of being with Hashem. And he says in his word, and he will atone for Amato, for his land and his people. And Moshe came and he spoke all the words of the song. And he said to them, Apply your heart to the words that I testify today against you, with which you are to instruct your children to be careful to perform all the words. So why does he have to remind them yet again to perform all the words of the Torah? The word amato that he uses, his land, has the same Hebrew letters, dalit, amot, which are four cubits. And therefore the verse, he will atone for his land and his people, tells us that when a person walks four feet, in his calling, four cubits in their calling, then all is forgiven and difficulty is smoothed a little bit for that person. Why observe the mitzvah? I will live as I see fit and the mitzvah of living in the land of Israel will guarantee my atonement? No. Moshe tells us that the, the verse, he will atone for his people and his land, applying to your heart the words that I testify against you today, instruct your children regarding them, be careful to perform all the words of this Torah why? Because the next verse tells us the why. Through this matter shall you prolong your days in the land that God has given you. In other words, through your faithfulness, through your consistency, 
God will bless the calling that He placed there within you. Amen? Amen. Who wants to see their, their call fulfilled? You had it there in you since you were a little child. You want to see that happen, right? Be consistent with God. Be regular with Him. And that you'll see it happen. Through this matter shall you prolong your days on the land which you cross the Jordan to possess it. If you sin in the land, you will be expelled from it, and you will not get the atonement you took for granted. This is why. Paul tells us the same thing. So people before you text in and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Torah says you won't be forgiven. Paul says the same thing. I'll tell you this again. Paul says the same thing. If you continue to live as pagans, there is no salvation for you. It's what Scripture says. Sorry to say that. God says you have to choose me or what everybody else has going on. One who is not involved in Torah study and is not sublimating the animal side of themselves, this person's body and desires reign supreme, possibly even dragging their intellect and their spirit down with them as well, occupying it with thoughts of deviousness and lust these are the things that people are plagued with that fully just go the other way, away from the Torah. Paul says the same thing. They are lost in the ignorance of their thinking, in the futility of their mind, right? So Paul's saying the same thing that the rabbis in the Mishnah are saying to us. Don't carry on this way anymore. You have a calling within you. Seek it out. Pursue it through your life and through your actions, through your words and through your thoughts. The true reason God gave us His Torah. God did not give Israel the Torah in order that we may prosper more than anybody else. The main reason He gave us the Torah is so that we would have a relationship with Him. And that we would know what is and is not good for us and Him. That's where everything starts. You want prosperity, you want healing, you want health, start having a relationship with Elohim. Start there. Once you start there, He gets involved. And things are never the same. With that being said, Ha'azinu, may your song to the Lord be one that is pleasing to Him in all days, in every occasion. Thank you so much. Good Shabbos and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.